The Godfather casting, especially for the character of Vito Corleone, was difficult because he was meant to be an older, really Italian-American person because the story was set in New York. And it's hard to find a 60-year-old newcomer who hasn't already distinguished themselves. And so when we looked at the various actors who could play the part, there, there really weren't any that we felt had the charisma or the mystery that could do it. So I concluded, who are the two greatest actors in the world, or the three greatest actors in the world, who are vaguely the age to, to play it? And we concluded, well, there was Laurence Olivier and there was Marlon Brando. Laurence Olivier was British with a British accent and was actually quite ill. And Marlon Brando was only 47, but Marlon Brando had another problem. Hey, Stella! He was um, considered very troublesome and his last few pictures had been big flops. Uh, it was a film called Quemada. It had done terribly, and the executive said, if you put Marlon Brando in The Godfather, it would be, it would be do less business than if you put a totally nobody in it. The president of Paramount told me in these words, he says, Francis, as president of Paramount Pictures, I am telling you that Marlon Brando will not be in this movie. Well, at that point, I just, I remember I just fell off the chair and lay on the rug and say, well, if I can't even pursue the few ideas I have, you know, what, what do you expect of me? So they said, all right, we'll, we'll give you three conditions for Brando to be in the picture. Number one, he must do a screen test. Number two, he must put up a million dollar bond that none of his behavior problems will cause uh, delays on the production, and number three, he must do the film for nothing. <laughs> so I listened to these three conditions, and I said, I said, okay, <laughs> because now they had said maybe Marlon Brando could be in the picture if I met these three conditions, how stupid they may be. I called up the house uh, that I was given to, to speak to Marlon Brando, and I didn't know him, and I was very, very respectful of him, of course, because of his great, great past work. And I said, basically, Mr. Brando, this character is an Italian. Maybe you'd like to experiment a little to see if you can play. Yeah, you're right. Maybe, maybe we can uh, see how I would do it. He didn't know he was doing a screen test. He just was experimenting. I said, we have to be like ninjas. We have to go to Mr. Brando's house. Don't make any noise. And we'll just sort of photograph him experimenting to be an Italian. So we went, we arrived very early in the morning and no one said a word. I had brought little dishes of Italian cheese, little Italian cigars, little pepperoncini or little sausages, little things I just put around in, in his house. Didn't say a word about it. And he came out, he had long blonde hair. He was very, you know, he was, as I said, only 47. He was quite a handsome young man. And as he came out, he, in a beautiful Japanese robe, I remember. He came out and he took his long hair and he kind of put it up behind his head and pinned it in and he got some shoe polish and he started to make it black and kind of do that. And then he put a white shirt on and I remember he took the white shirt and he was taking his collar, interesting about little seeds of a character, and he started to bend the end of the collar and he said, Oh, those Italian guys, the collar is always bent. And, and he even said, oh, maybe his voice should be very hoarse because he shot in the story in the throat. <laughs> he was talking like this. <laughs> like that, not saying anything. And meanwhile, we were photographing this. So he reached down and took a little of the cheese and nibbled and he took the little cigar and he didn't light it, but he kept going. <laughs> He even took some Kleenex and he put it into his mouth and said, uh, you know, and he, he said, those guys look like bulldogs. And it was a miracle because the character was growing out of this. I took this tape and I didn't know what to do with it. 
So rather than show it to the president of Paramount Pictures, I decided to go to New York and, 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 and show it to the chairman and the owner of Paramount, who was named Charlie Bluthorn, who was an interesting person. You should read about him. And he had a company called Gulf and Western. It was the first conglomerate. And one of the companies he owned was Paramount. I'm going to make him an offer he can't refuse. So I went to his office in New York, and I set up this tape in a conference room right outside uh, where Mr. Bluthorn's office was. And I knocked on the door. Charlie Bluthorn comes out, and he recognized me. Oh, Francis, what can I do? I said, well, look at this. And I turned on the tape recorder, and there is Marlon Brando with this long blonde hair rolling it up. And Charlie Bluthorn said, no, no, absolutely not. Marlon Brando, ah. And as he watched and saw this transformation, he said, that's incredible. That's incredible. And as of that moment, I knew that I had Brando in the part. And of course, they didn't make him do a bond for his behavior, and they didn't pay him very much. But in fact, uh, he got the part, and of course, Brando, uh, uh, to this day, is thought of for that role.